Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. I know another day that I'm getting a video out later than normal and I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. It's it's busy around here. Um, it, we've just got a lot of stuff going on. I'm I'm way behind in working for this this Prepared Homestead Expo. Um, it's, it's still a go, but man, there's been stuff here at the homestead and our family that's just it's holding us back on getting things done. Um, we've had a, a lot of expenditures this month on other things and doctor bills and just things that that come up out of nowhere and so it's slowing me down folks so you know a little prayer for us and our family would be helpful but we're we're, we're pushing through it and we're going to get things going and we're, we're working hard on this uh, prepared homestead expo.com i understand a lot of you are probably saying hey i never got a response email they're coming uh, there, uh, the the amount of the amount of response from from you, the viewers, has been overwhelming. Uh, so we're trying to get caught up on that. Um, and then I also realized uh, a couple of days ago that there were a lot of emails for that event that got shifted into my that sent to my spam folder. And so I'm going through those now and trying to clean up that backlog. Um, if you want to know about it, it's preparedhomesteadexpo.com, um, a two-day free event for the family but uh it's just it's been busy around here that being said um folks we got a problem we got a problem in this country and it's something that i have mentioned a couple of times recently but haven't gotten into it deep uh, i noticed today that it seems to finally be hitting the mainstream news um, and i think it's a problem that if it isn't fixed really quickly um, it could be it, it has the potential of being that thing that that brings things to a crashing halt and that is diesel fuel shortages um diesel fuel well, gas prices and diesel fuel have been skyrocketing you all are aware of that for the other day you know around here the the, the fuel prices are about the cheapest in the nation and the other day for the first time in my life i paid over four dollars a gallon for gasoline 409 a gallon i know many of you are paying more than that but for around here that's pretty high uh, diesel, depending on where you're going, uh, on the low end is in the high $5, close to $6, into the $6, $7, and even $8 in some places. Um, there is a, a real critical shortage of diesel fuel. And I don't think a lot of people get it. They don't get how critical this is. Many people for years have said that crude oil is the lifeblood of this nation. And if that is true, then diesel fuel, that's the red blood cells in that oil. Um, and this country won't move. Nothing runs, nothing functions, nothing, 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 nothing will happen without diesel fuel. And as much as some of you, maybe a few, a couple, maybe, uh, are, you know, kind of the tree huggerish type and would just love for everything to be, you know, not fossil fuels and renewable green energies and blah, blah, blah. And hey, that's great. And if we get to that point someday, I would be all for that. But we're not there now. And there's no possible way that this country can exist without diesel fuel. And we are in seeing some of the, the shortest, lowest supplies and the highest prices we've ever seen and some of the lowest supplies uh, in the last few decades. Uh, and so I want to show you some things. There's plenty of news articles out there. I mean, there's a few right here uh, just in the last day or two talking about how this is critical. This is bad. All this other stuff going on. We got baby food shortages. We got you know, fertilizer shortages and prices going through the roof and the, the, the cost to farm is, is outrageous and too much for some farmers and it, it just keeps going and going and going. But folks, let me tell you this, if this diesel fuel shortage continues to spiral out of control, uh, you're gonna see some really bad things and happen in certain areas and it could be widespread because, you know, they may run out of diesel fuel on the East Coast um, and, it, that may happen there, but I assure you it's going to put a drain on the rest of the country because they're going to be shipping diesel fuel from, from the reserves here over to the East Coast to keep it running, and it's, it's just going to cause a, a, a cascading effect. Um, we are at a, a I think, a 30-year low on the diesel fuel reserves, what we have in storage, uh, not as a nation, but just as private companies. They, they just, they don't have any diesel fuel. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons because of this. The first blame is, well, it's the Putin and Ukraine war and all that kind of stuff. But this has been happening before then. Uh, the, the other 
you know, argument is and, and complaint and blame is, well, it's the pandemic. They, you know, it slowed things down, slowed workers down. I'm sure that affected it. But some of the real things that's been happening has been this push to go green. And we're not ready for that. We're just not. Uh, did you know that we haven't produced or built a refinery since 1972? Um, and there's all this talk right now since this diesel fuel shortage has been come to light that, oh, we'll just ramp up production. Well, on the East Coast, the refineries out there that produce diesel fuel, they're already running at 90%. They don't really have any room to, to, to ramp it up that much. Uh, and you can't just overnight, you know, it's not like you flip a switch and boom, you know, we're, we're go. We've, we've now produced a lot more fuel. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, and and the largest, um, according to this article here, the largest uh, refinery was shut down in 2019. That's before the pandemic. Uh, this has been happening for a while, and I, I believe in my heart, uh, it all fits with the agenda 2030 and great reset uh, of, of kind of bringing us to our knees and forcing this green revolution down our throats, even though we're not ready for it. We don't have the technology uh, to handle it, but nevertheless, it happens. Um, Right now, uh, I checked on in New York, uh, wholesale diesel is selling for four eighty five a gallon. That's wholesale price. Um, the the at the pump price is six plus dollars in some places. Some and it, it's most likely going to go higher. Um, there are you know the, these truck drivers. They cannot. They they can't keep paying these prices. I mean, it's getting to the point now that it's costing uh, roughly a dollar a mile in some places, uh, if not more. Uh, to run a truck to just just to pay for the fuel a dollar a mile um they they can't keep doing it and for those of you that don't get it i i don't i don't know why i would have to say this but there may be a couple that don't get it um everything that you get everything that you buy in a store just about everything uh at some point was transported on diesel fuel the big uh ocean liners the the big you know cargo uh, tankers that uh cargo ships that uh, haul things out in the ocean vast majority of them it's diesel fuel uh, the trains those trains that haul freight around across the country diesel fuel um, the trucks that deliver it to your grocery store or take it from the warehouse or wherever it is diesel fuel uh, it, it's all it's all moved around by diesel fuel folks and and the numbers are getting pretty scary of how low they are in fact scary enough that trucking companies uh, these big trucking companies are putting out warnings um, to their to their fleet drivers, saying, "Hey, I mean, here's here's a, a message that's been sent out, uh, letting them know that they're that in the coming days, we're talking days, uh, they could see some shortages at fuel uh, pumps. And in fact, uh, some of these truck stops love truck stop. A big uh, nationwide truck stop has put out a warning also that they're expecting if, oh, in the next week or so uh, to start seeing real shortages." at their pumps, meaning they don't, they're not gonna have enough fuel there to, to supply the truckers, which means that the truckers aren't gonna be moving. Uh, if they ration things, uh, that's gonna do the same thing. They, they just, they can't go as much. They can't you know distribute the goods as much because things are gonna be rationed. Um, here's a chart here showing uh, on the East Coast, the, the production has dropped so drastically um, and if you look at that chart as it's going downhill, it's at least a third. We're at least down a third uh, from what we were producing. These are some pretty drastic numbers. Again, I, I'm not the expert. You could blame it on COVID. You could blame it on Putin. You know, you could blame it on all kinds of things. But this is a problem, I believe, that's been building for many years now of, of cutting back, uh, reducing production, cutting off oil pipelines, uh, raising the prices of stuff, and then just making it generally more difficult to make diesel fuel. Um, and and this, this is something that could creep up quite fast, okay? Um, if in a week or two we start seeing trucks sitting on the side of the road or lined up at, at truck stops because they don't have any fuel and they're trying to get it, every one of those trucks represent a lot of food or a lot of parts, uh, a, a lot of a lot of appliances, a lot of a lot of just stuff, okay? Stuff, stuff that you use every day. And that means when they're sitting on the side of the road, it's not getting delivered to where it goes. And so when you go into the store and you try to buy stuff, it's not gonna be there, okay? We're already dealing with 
this baby food shortage, and, and it, which I believe is also very manufactured. Uh, this, this though, if if it gets out of control, it's it's not going to take very long to start seeing some really critical problems in this country because of diesel fuel shortages. Um, th there's there's so much on this and so much so much of a problem here, and amazingly so many people don't get it they don't get it uh, you know I've, I've seen posts online like, well good because we need to switch over to, to green renewable energy oh oh really really so so how are you gonna move uh, all those that tons and tons and tons of food and stuff in your Tesla I mean you, you gotta hook your Tesla up to that 50 foot semi trailer and you're gonna pull it around in your Tesla how are you gonna do that what what's what's your plan What's your plan for, for moving things around? I know, I know those trees are great to hug on, but when you go to your Starbucks to pay for your outrageously priced, um, not very good coffee, and they don't have any coffee there because it didn't get delivered on the truck that ran out of gas, maybe you'll wake up. Because I'm telling you folks, this, this is another, and if, for any of you, for any of you that still are out there saying that this isn't, there's no orchestrated plan here. You're crazy. You're just a conspiracy theorist. Why is there so much going on at once? Can you ever remember a time in your life that you had so much happening to the whole system as a whole? You know, food plants burning, warehouses burning, farms burning, droughts, too much rain, skyrocketed prices of food, you know, fertilizer shortages, parts shortages, you know, cyber attacks on tractor companies, all this kind of stuff that's just little by little chipping away at the big overall system. And now this. And while I'm not making any predictions that this diesel shortage is going to be the final straw on the camel's back, I'm saying it has the possibility, more so than many other things that are happening that are all bad, but not quite as serious as this. Because if this continues to spread, and here, here I forgot to mention this, I'm going to break, interrupt myself. Uh, with all the diesel shortages that are going on, and this has been happening, you, know, you can find articles back months ago warning of this. Did you know that the, just recently, in the last few days, uh, we're exporting the most diesel fuel outside, exporting outside of this country that we have in the last two years. We're exporting tons of it, okay? Why are we doing that if we're running out? And you don't think that the people in power that's running things aren't trying to crash this country and our economy and our supply systems and everything. If we're running out of fuel, why are we exporting it out to other countries? You need to get ready, folks. Get your houses in order. This is serious. Um, you could easily, easily expect to see some serious problems from this, especially for those of you on the East Coast and the Southeast. But if it starts tumbling and collapsing over there in the East Coast, it's, I have a feeling there could be a, a serious ripple effect across the country. Uh, you know, Fuel prices don't go up in one place in, or in a whole region and then the rest of the country stays low. It happens everywhere. Uh, so, so get your houses in order, folks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.